Reaction quotient is a number that is calculated in the same way as the equilibrium constant, Keq. However, instead of using concentrations at equilibrium, the way we calculate a reaction quotient uses concentrations of chemicals where the reaction is not at equilibrium. There are two uses of reaction quotient. We can use it to determine if a reaction is at equilibrium or not. If a reaction is not at equilibrium, we can also use the reaction quotient to predict the direction the reaction will take in order to achieve equilibrium. To understand how to use reaction quotient, we must revisit the mathematical expression of equilibrium constant or quotient. In the expression, the concentrations of products are in the numerator and the concentration of reactants are in the denominator. An increase in concentration in the numerator would increase the value of the reaction quotient. Vice versa, any decreases in concentration of the products in the numerator will therefore decrease the value of the quotient. If we think about the concentrations of reactants, this will have the opposite effect. Any increases in concentration of reactants in the denominator would in fact decrease the value of the reaction quotient. And that means any decreases in the concentrations of the reactants would increase the value of the reaction quotient. It is important for you to understand those relationships before we move on to the next part of the video. If the calculated reaction quotient is smaller than the equilibrium constant of the reaction, then we'll have more reactants and less products at that instance compared to the concentrations at equilibrium. This would mean the forward reaction rate will be faster than the reverse reaction rate. If the forward reaction rate is faster, then over time, we will produce more products, so the concentration of product will increase over time, and the concentration of reactants will decrease over time. The effect of this is that eventually, the value of the reaction quotients will increase as the products are increasing, and the reactants are decreasing over time. This change will continue until the reaction quotient becomes the same value as the equilibrium constant, Keq. If the reaction quotient is larger than the equilibrium constant, then the opposite is true. The reverse reaction rate now becomes faster than the forward reaction rate. So over time, the concentration of reactants will increase and the concentration of products will decrease. So if you apply these changes again to the mathematical expression of the equations, as the reactants increase and the products decrease, the numerator becomes smaller, the denominator becomes larger. So the value of the quotient will decrease over time until it becomes equal to the equilibrium constant, Keq. An important concept you should take away from the previous two scenarios that we discussed is that a chemical system or reaction will proceed in such a way such that the quotient will eventually become equal to the equilibrium constant. Whether or not the quotient is smaller than or bigger than the equilibrium constant at the very beginning, that's reinforced what we discussed through an example. We have a following reversible reaction between sulfur dioxide, oxygen gas, and sulfur trioxide. This is the equilibrium constant of the equation. We have two experiments from which concentrations of all the three gases are determined as shown by the table. The question we'll discuss is, is the reaction for each experiment at equilibrium? If not, which way will the reaction move towards to achieve equilibrium? Let's take a look at experiment one first. If we write the reaction quotient, we'll have the product sulfur trioxide in the numerator and the reactants sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas in the denominator. By substituting these numbers into the quotient expression, we'll get a number 2.25. If this number is not equal to the equilibrium constant, which is 4.34 given by the question, then the reaction is not yet at equilibrium. In this experiment, since the quotient is smaller than the Keq, the forward reaction rate is greater than the reverse reaction rate. So the reaction will move towards a product side in order to achieve equilibrium. What this means in simpler words is that over time, the products will increase in concentration while the reactants will decrease in concentration until the reaction reaches an equilibrium. To analyze experiment two, we'll do a similar set of steps. We'll first find 
the value of the reaction quotient by substituting the numbers into the appropriate parts of the expression. So again, products at the top and the reactants in the denominator. This will give us 4.90 as the reaction quotients. Again, because this number here is not equal to the equilibrium constant, the reaction is not at equilibrium. However, unlike before, the reaction quotient is now larger than the equilibrium constant. So the reverse reaction rate is greater than the forward reaction rate. And as a result, the reaction will move towards the reactant side in order to achieve equilibrium. What this means is that over time, the reactant concentrations will increase while the product concentrations will decrease. Unlike factors affecting equilibrium position, there is only one factor that can affect the equilibrium constant value, and that is temperature. This is an important statement to remember as other factors such as concentration, pressure, and volume of the system will not change the actual value of the equilibrium constant. So please remember temperature is the only factor. When it comes to the effect of temperature, again, we have to consider the enthalpy change of the reaction. An increase in temperature will increase the actual value of the equilibrium constant for an endothermic reaction. So the opposite here is true. If we have an increase in temperature for an exothermic reaction, that will reduce the equilibrium constant of that reaction. If we have a reduction or decrease in temperature, this will increase the equilibrium constant of an exothermic reaction. Again, the opposite here is true. So for an exothermic reaction, if we have an increase in temperature, its equilibrium constant will decrease. We'll take a look at why this is the case by using a very specific reaction that we have come across before. This is a reversible reaction between nitrogen gas, hydrogen gas, and ammonia, NH3. The forward reaction is exothermic as indicated by a negative enthalpy change. If we have a decrease in temperature, the equilibrium will favor the forward exothermic reaction, so the position of the equilibrium will shift to the right-hand side to give us an increase in ammonia and decrease in the two reactants, nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas respectively. If you remind yourself what the equilibrium constant depends on, which is the product concentration divided by the reactant concentrations, if the product concentration increases while the reactant concentration decrease, you can imagine the actual number itself will increase as a result of this temperature change. The graph on the right hand side will help you understand this change. So when the temperature is decreased, the reactant concentrations will both decrease while the ammonia concentration will increase. So once these gases reach equilibrium, as shown by the very end of this graph, the equilibrium constant of the reaction will be higher than before. What if we have an increase in temperature? An increase in temperature will favor the endothermic reaction, and in this case, this is the reverse reaction. So the equilibrium position will shift to the left-hand side, to give you a reduction in ammonia concentration, but an increase in the nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas concentrations. So if the ammonia decreases, while well, the reactant will both increase, the equilibrium constant will decrease instead. Again, like before, the graph on the right-hand side will help you visualize what's actually happening to the concentrations of these three chemicals. After the temperature change, when the reaction re-achieves the equilibrium, if you calculate the equilibrium constant at that instance, it will be smaller than before.